Welcome to the big program and thanks for watching. We have a very special guest today, but before we get to that, we are in the middle of football season and uh, the one game I do kind of tune into is always the San Diego State, New Mexico game. So you saw San Diego State beat the Lobos this weekend and uh, so you got a chance to see one of our homegrown Jordan Bird, which is always fun to watch Jordan play. And so we want to take you back to the, the way back machine when we actually had a, you saw him play for San Diego State, but he was in one of our commercials first. We used to have some pretty funny commercials around here. Uh, and we'll take a look at a very young Jordan Bird. Bird. Hey, what's up? All right, got a list for you? Okay. Need it done by the end of today? Don't forget the coffee. Okay. <sighs> hmm. Hey, Jason. You got your coffee? All the stuff you need on the list. Okay. Wow. Good job, Bird. That was Jordan Bird way back when in his Manzano days. But enough about football now for the moment. I have a very special basketball guest today. One of my favorite players to watch in the city is in studio, and that is LaQuavis Riley Ottman. Riley, welcome, and thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. It's almost time, isn't it? Like, we're kind of going towards the end of football, and basketball is almost here, isn't it? I know. I'm so excited, especially since it's kind of starting to get back to normal. Right. So should be a pretty good season, I but think. But does it really ever end for you guys? Because, like, you play a ton of club, don't you? Yeah, I actually played on the New Mexico Clippers with a bunch of the good, like, high school players. So it's constant. There's no off-season or anything like that. So how long of a break was there between kind of the end of your year there at La Cueva and, and club? Not really at all. I think we were even like playing like tournaments during the season. Then I also did prep. I did that. So there was tournaments all throughout. Like it just kind of like mixed. How, and how is that? I mean, that, I mean, it's fun, obviously, but that, that's got to be some wear and tear on the body as well. I mean, is it pretty rough? Talk about that. Um, it's a lot, but I think I've like conditioned and I've been doing it my whole life since it, like fifth grade. I've been playing basketball nonstop. I think it's fun. I just think if you enjoy it, then you don't even think about how much it like does to your body and all that. Right. But you play with like a different motor too. Like it's, it's pretty <laughs> intense. Like there's not a lot of people that play as hard as you do. So, I mean, the energy you put out on the court is pretty intense. So, I mean, there's got to be some times where you're just absolutely gassed there definitely is like I just actually went and played in a tournament and I was like wow because <laughs> right. I'm constantly running up and down and like defense definitely my thing like up and at it all the time so it's hard and I definitely get tired but like my coaches and all that like know like when I need to come out and I'll like make sure to like let them know if I need to but I usually just push through it and do a pretty good job of just like staying with it all right and where did that come from I mean like were you always that type of player or I mean that has to take a certain amount of conditioning right um definitely but even since when I was little I was like the one where they'd have to be like slow down like you don't like it was always like up and down like I'd always be up on people like that's just I like energy I like bringing energy to the game and all that so when I'm like running up down the court and like the game is like fast that just it's more fun for me so when I'm having fun there's more energy and all so then that. you have to love the style that coach Perea had you guys playing there at La Cueva right definitely because he liked that transition type of defense and offense and it was just I like that style of play the big announcement obviously was I think a couple of weeks ago right so you yeah. are going to play at the University of Colorado Colorado Springs congratulations thank you first of all we got a picture up there you look pretty happy about it in that <laughs> picture it definitely so was tell us about how happy you were to 
get that out of the way. Um, well, like the recruiting process is obviously a lot. And then I went up and visited UCCS and I met the girls and like got to walk around the campus and met the coaches and I loved everything about it. They fit my style of play, that like transition. And the girls were nice. The coaches were like, you could tell they were just like a big family and I really liked the vibe. And then also just the school in general was beautiful and it's like everything I wanted. Right. So it was pretty awesome to like get to actually like continue my career there, like somewhere that I love mm -hmm. also. And I'm excited to like kind of also just have it like out of the way before the season because it's just like kind of like well, a stress. That was going to yeah. be my next question. Like, <laughs> I mean, obviously you have to be thrilled to have it out of the way, one, but it is a huge decision, right? So, so what goes into that kind of decision? I mean, t take us inside your kitchen or your living room or wherever you're making these decisions. I mean, yes, there's the one part. Of, hey, I want to decide. I want to get this yeah. out of the way. I want this off my plate. But it's a huge decision. So tell us, take us inside how that how that happened. Well, definitely my family had a big role to play in it. Like, I think my first ever, like, college call was with, um, like, my first offer was Western New Mexico. Okay. And that was, like, pretty exciting for me. I think we were actually on a camping trip. So, like, I'm in the camper, and we're all, like, super excited. And I tell my family, and they've always been super supportive with all right. that. And then it kind of, like, grew from there. Like, I went to another tournament, and a bunch of RMAC schools started contacting me. And that was, like, kind of stressful because you'd text the one coach back. But it was also right. just, like, such a great, like, process to be going through like I was so grateful for it all and it was a lot like I went on a few visits I went to like Regis University um, Pueblo or Colorado State Pueblo then UCCS and then I went to Western also and that was fun like getting to meet all the different like college coaches and like seeing all the colleges because it kind of gave me like an idea of what I wanted in a college and that was UCCS but right. yeah. I hear the campus is beautiful there oh it's beautiful it's on top of a mountain and you can see everything like it it's beautiful beats the hell out of silver city i'm sure <laughs> but tell us about um i mean it's a big thing to go out of state that's a big thing and people you know you, people kind of dismiss that but that's a real discussion like okay i'm gonna leave the state tell us about that um well it's not that far it's like a pretty easy drive but i also have family like 40 minutes away up in um denver or i think parker denver right. so i always have family there and then my mom's also a flight attendant and she's having like her overnights and like she can come visit anytime she wants. So it's like far. So I get to like kind of like grow up and like be on my own and get that type of experience. But I'm also not too far from my right. family. Well, we'll take our first time out with Riley here. We'll get back. We'll kind of talk about last year, which was an odd season and get into all that high school stuff. We'll be right back with Riley Ottman. Top by Ottman, and she averages five of those a game. There's a steal and a layup for Ottman last year, especially with the three ball. You know, the only thing that you know, LaQuaver really lacks is size. Jones. To Here is Porti, blocked in, and that'll do it. Emma Eaton blocks in the point, and the Chargers take this one in four sets. Men split out wide, and we got Garcia on the motion. Melfi met in the backfield, he gets off a guy, can't get off the second. <laughs> Gerardo airs it out. Caden Valdez, he hits him. This will go for a touchdown. What a nice play. 52 yard touchdown pass to Caden Valdez. Looking for the end zone up the middle to McIntosh. Oh, beautiful catch. Touchdown Chargers, Martin McIntosh in double coverage. Snatched that one right out of the air. That was a big time grab right there. In the middle, more. Woo! Great dig. Tipped over the right side. Carlson, she's able to set Leva for the match. Yes! Lock 
coming in. Here comes a run forward by Manzano. Only the punter to beat. It's Isaiah Garcia. And Garcia to the 20, to the 10, and the touchdown. That was set up by amazing blocking on the play. To get on some type of rollout. Yeah, Chavis looking, time. still looking towards the corner of the end zone. It is caught. Great catch. Touchdown, little Nathan Lopez coming up big again. Big Nathan Lopez puts the Cougars on top as he sticks the landing. 14-7 Cougs. All right, that may have been the PNM play of the game. We'll find out at the end of the night. There's a short catch. Up man caught it. He found a lane, coach. Uh oh, there he here goes. we go. There Check we it go. out. The foot race. Ramirez takes off. Can he keep it going? Touchdown, West Mesa. Yards after the catch, Ludi Herrera is free. It's a foot race. Tristan Ludi Herrera wins most of those, and he does. It's a touchdown for the Spartans, and Tristan Ludi Herrera goes 50 yards on the score. We are back with LaQuavis Riley Ottman. We were talking about her decision to go to the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs and all that. But I do want to get back into the high school scene a little bit and I guess start with last year. I mean, that was an odd season. First of all, did you think there would even be a season? Um, I was doubtful. My dad always like said there might be and I knew it was going to be like definitely like cut short and kind of strange. But I always thought like in the back of my head, I always hoped we were going to have one. Like, I mean, how do you stay ready? How did you stay ready during those COVID times? Um, I mean, we'd go to parks. Like there was like a lot of the gyms weren't open during that time, which right. was really unfortunate. But we would find ways to definitely shoot. Like I have a basketball hoop in my front yard. Like I have um, Hoffmantown Church like by me. Like it was just like if you wanted to put in the effort, you could. If you could find. I have it. the odd thing is now. Okay, a little behind the scenes here. Teammate of yours happens to be my neighbor, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She also has a basketball hoop in both yards, front and back. Have never seen you, her, <laughs> any teammate ever shoot hoops. There. Didn't need to call us out like that. I've, I've never <laughs> seen it. Like, I've never seen it. Um, we don't usually go to her so house. So you go to the gym then, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean, right. yeah. There's gyms. There's, like, um, Uptown Church, which we'd go and, like, people would shoot at. There was gyms open occasionally that you could go. Right. I, now, you guys are a pretty tight-knit group, so did you guys kind of all motivate each other to stay ready through those weird times, or how did that work? Oh, it definitely we motivated each other, because, like, I might say someone might be lazy at home, and right. they'd be like, I'm going to go shoot, and it's like, oh, they're shooting? Like, now I have to go shoot. So we would definitely always been, like, there to, like, motivate each other and kind of, like, push each other. It's, like, friendly competition. Like, right. yeah, you want to make each other better. So how was that weird abbreviated season? Um, I mean, you knew what it was going to be, but it still had to be pretty strange. It was different, like the masks, of course, that was like hard right. to get used to, but I still thought it was fun. Like, it was like odd thinking like, am I gonna have a next game? Like, are we gonna be able to play it? Like, is COVID gonna shut it down? Or like, I almost even got a close like um, contact, so right. I almost had to sit out a game. So that was kind of scary to think about, but I still think it was fun. I didn't end how I wanted it to. We'll get to that, we'll get <laughs> <Yeah>. to that. <laughs> but it was the best, we made the best of it, I think. So how odd was that? You'd mentioned it, but so there you guys go, going about your season, and then El Dorado season kind of gets shut down for COVID, right? Yeah. And so they're on the sidelines while you guys are playing. You go through your season, all of a sudden they pretty much have to make up their entire district schedule in a week, and they just run the table. I mean, that had to be very odd. You know, obviously those were, you know, they had two games with you guys in that stretch, but it was just kind of weird how you, here's you guys having this whole season. They were just pretty much condensed into that week and a half. Talk about that. 
Um, it was weird. It was like also like were they getting practice in? You always wonder like how that was gonna be, and then we had to play them back to back, right. which was that was kind of odd because like we lost both games unfortunately. But it was just like kind of weird to like think about how we had the full season. I feel bad for them personally because right. who knows if they were in the gym or anything like that, and that could happen to us. So it was just weird thinking about how they just had that entire stretch where they had to play in like one single week. But right. That was a good answer, but there has to be, like, uh, uh, there had to be a part of you or your teammates thinking, like, okay, we're playing a regular season now, and these girls are going to come here in a week and a half, and they could steal this district from us. That had to be a thought. Um, at the time, I thought we were going to beat them. Well, I was of course, like, I was of like, I thought they were like, I was like, oh, they're getting no practice in. Right. I was like, they're not. I was like, we got this, and then it was kind of like a shock when they first came back. But there's always that thought. It's like we better win, especially right. El Dorado, like our rivals. Right. So. I mean, I thought we were going to win it all, but it did not happen. So the, you, you, so you finish up the season on three losses, which is rare. That had to leave a very bad taste in your mouth, uh, especially of such a, a talented group of girls, right? So, I mean, what's the motivation like immediately after the season? I mean, I want, I don't want to end like that because that's how everyone remembers us now. Like, I still, even people at school will be like, remember when you lost to them? So, like, it motivates me to want to do better because I know we have such a, like, talented group of girls, but I feel like if we just all play together that we could be one of the best teams. But I kind of like that we're kind of like the underdogs now. Like, everyone's like, oh, they ended off the three losses. Right. It's like the underdogs for the next season to kind of, like, motivate us to, like, pop out and like win it all I think the new hurdle is obviously coaching change as well so I mean tell me about that um I mean we were all sad to lose coach Preya, but I feel like we all kind of like knew it was gonna come because he's been here for a while right. and like all that but Moose our new coach oh sorry we coach Marissa or whatever all right. All right. It's all right. <laughs> um, she definitely cares like you can tell she cares a lot about us in the program she's been there so that, yeah, that she's has to help the there. transition and we've all been super close with her it's gonna be like different like getting to her be like the head coach like right. that kind of like adjustment but we've all kind of like listened to her and we respect her and we know that she's gonna do whatever she can to like help us win so I think it should be good we don't have an assistant coach yet though so we don't know how that's gonna go right. but so take me back to when you came in as a freshman, right? I mean, you're, you're with this group of freshmen. First of all, did you guys know you'd all be there together? Kind of, did you play club together, that group? I mean, tell me about that. Um, I've been playing with Tiona on our team since third grade. On the, it was like the New Mexico Wolf Pack is what we called right. it. And same thing with Nina, or, or Catalina. We right. played on her with the Wolf Pack. And then Jersey also joined the Wolf right. Pack around like eighth grade, seventh grade years. So we all were kind of pretty close and we knew we were gonna go to La Cueva. So it was pretty exciting to have that like right. group of freshmen like coming in like, yeah, like everyone knows who we are. So that was pretty exciting. So here's this group of great freshmen that come in that get added to Kaya Ingram. So there had to be some expectations right away to compete at the beginning, right? There definitely was, especially since like kind of like all like the upperclassmen and stuff like knew that we were coming mm -hmm. in and like a lot of people like expected a lot of us, especially making varsity our freshman year. And, like, even, like, our parents and all that, like, even I expected a lot out of myself. Like, oh, I made varsity. Like, I need to prove that I'm going to be, like, I'm good enough to be here and, like, all that. So there was a lot of expectations from everyone. How was that first, you know, first take us your first game, obviously your first experience within the program? I mean, was it everything you expected? Was What was harder? What was easier? Um, It was, I think, everything I expected, it kind of. I knew it was going to be, like, I had to prove my like spot and like make it a difference on the court. So like my first game, like I was just nervous, of course, but like mm -hmm. also super excited that they like believed in me enough to like be on varsity my freshman year and thought I was like mature enough to be right. there. But I I did the best I could and I think it turned out pretty well my right. freshman year. Powerhouse at the time was West Mesa, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys lose to West Mesa in the Metro tournament. But, I mean, a pretty good season, but you're in the toughest district as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, the season ends in a loss to Rio Rancho in the playoffs. Where did you guys feel you were at at that point? After your freshman year, you kind of take inventory of the season. Where did you guys feel you were at? Um, I thought we were going to do better next year after our first season because all of, like, the freshmen and all of us, like, got better throughout mm -hmm. the season and, like, finally, like, adjusted to that level of competition. And then also I think it was just everyone kind of like matured with it. And how cool is it to kind of see your friends all kind of mm -hmm. rising up yeah. with you? Like you guys are kind of like maturing into these badasses kind of, right? Yeah. Like that's got to be pretty cool. Especially like Jersey. Like I'll give Jersey that. She definitely like 
it was crazy to see how much like everyone improved right. throughout the season like especially like even myself like you could tell from freshmen like if you go back and look like just the level like how we play is so different now we're all more confident and like you can tell that like we all, like believe in like ourselves and know that like we're the leaders of the team and all that so you could definitely see improvements in all of us metro championship you take down a three-time champ that had to be a big thing that was a really fun game. It was super exciting. We had fans, actually, which was different than a normal. Lot. A lot of fans. And then it was just, like, exciting. Like, the energy, like, even in the locker room at halftime, like, the, everyone had so much energy, and we were all, like, and it was just, it was crazy. I loved it. It was, it was fun. A little extra special that they were kind of the big-time, three-time champs, mm -hmm. and then now you could start that. Kind of run. It was fun seeing on the trophy or whatever. It was like West Mesa, West Mesa, West Mesa. Then it was La Cueva. I was sad that we didn't get a Metro tournament last right. year because I was trying to be two time champs in a row. But hopefully this year, if we get one, we'll see. We'll take our commercial break here. We'll pick up with that on the other side of this break with Riley Ottman. Here's Savic. 10 seconds left. All by herself is Jersey Jones. Jones loses control. Jones kicks it out. Love, Ottman for the game. Ottman at the buzzer. La Cueva wins 64-61, avenging their only loss of the season. It's Riley Ottman from downtown, and they don't get much bigger than that. Clark's Pet Emporium welcome you to bring in your pets. We know that having your pet with you makes the experience of shopping for them even better. And we welcome you to bring your kids also. Clark's Pet Emporium, your pet's second best friend. The energy landscape is limitless and ever-changing. Cleaner energy resources are crucial to New Mexico's environment. For 100 years, PNM has utilized cutting-edge technology and employed hard-working New Mexicans to ensure that we have consistent, reliable energy when we need it. For life's loudest moments, quietest moments, and every moment in between, we're dedicated to providing you with energy now and into the future. All you have to do is dream of what to do with it next. High school sports are back. You can watch every ProView Network broadcast online on the NFHS Network. Every moment from every game from every sport, including all NMAA state championship games. Get your monthly pass now. Just go to ProViewNetworks.com, click on the NFHS logo, and sign up today. Watch New Mexico's best. Back with Laquavis Riley Ottman. Uh, we saw the buzzer beater, obviously, there in commercial break. That had to be pretty cool. That was exciting, especially last season. My shooting wasn't the best. It was like my percentages were way down for three, especially. So making that, it was just like kind of like a boost of confidence at the time. Like if I just don't think so much about it, like I can like hit stuff like that. And it was just a great way to end the game. Was I that your first buzzer beater? Have you had buzzer beaters before? No, I've had buzzer okay. beaters before, but I don't think anything quite like that. So right. that one was pretty exciting. Well, take us through that play because it kind of broke down a little bit at the end. So tell us about that. I don't even know if we had like an actual set out play. I think it was just like push the ball up, like right. try to get a foul or anything like that. And I was like, oh, Jersey's got like a wide open layup. And then like she kind of like fumbled it. And I was like, oh, no. And then like I was kind of like. Here it is again, yeah. I was kind of like back far. I was like, oh gosh, like let me run up. And it was just kind of perfect timing because I was a trailer and they just didn't see me there. So it was pretty fun. And that's against a very good team that traditionally has given you guys some problems, Farmington. Definitely, because they have Kiani and right. she's a really talented player. And like 
it's hard for us. Like, they have a lot of, like, good offensive players. So on defense, they were a challenge. And then also shooting, like, getting out on them. They had a bunch of good shooters, so. Was it hard for everyone to kind of find – you talked about your shooting struggles that year, but, you know, you guys lose one of your best shooters. Nina, was it hard for everyone to kind of find their new roles? Because, I mean, that was the kick-out player, right, that you could yeah. kick the ball out to. That would be a hard adjustment for your offense. It was, and, like – our shooting did suffer without Nina, but I think like people found a way to like kind of like make up for it. Like we definitely did hurt losing her, but everyone like we drove more and like we had to learn to like we had to learn to pass more and like right. move the ball, which is something we can still work on, I think. But we all had to make adjustments definitely. So let's go way back now. Where did this super athletic, super high motor, crazy athletic Riley Ottman come from? athletic background like are your parents athletic tell me about that um my dad is athletic my mom not so much okay. she likes to think she is but not okay. so much my dad played um college baseball i think it was okay. and then my grandpa jim ottman he used course was played um football at unm right. and all that so definitely an athletic background so let me ask you about coach ottman for a second okay so when you uh, if for those of you that don't know legendary <laughs> sandia football coach right you, he does some games with us here on provi networks so the first time that, you know, there's little old Riley bringing Grandpa her, his first either La Cueva t-shirt or La Cueva hat. Like, how did that go over? Well, I remember the first time I joined La Cueva, he would wear like a Sandia hat and right. a La Cueva t-shirt. Like, he was like, I still love Sandia, right. but I'll support La Cueva because of you. So that was kind of funny, I thought. like he But wear... now he's always full, full oh, La Cueva. He's decked yeah. out. <laughs> he's decked out now because I personally... I'm his favorite in the right. family. Okay. So, and he's like definitely one of my number one, like my number one supporters. Right. So like all decked out every game, will beat every game, text me before each of them. Like he's always like been a major part of like my athletic background. And right. all that. What other sports did you play when you were young? Um, I started off with soccer. I played soccer when I was younger. And then um, I did volleyball for a little. I don't know if you count that. And then softball. And then I um, track. I still okay. run track. I did track freshman year, and I'm going to do it this year also. So that's my main two are probably track and basketball. Do you think soccer is kind of where the endurance, the motor kind of came from? Um, I mean, they I've, say you have to be in incredibly yeah. good shape to play soccer, right? So is that kind of where, I mean, did that aid it or help it, you think? Maybe, probably, because that's soccer just running up and down, and I... I heard I was pretty good at it. I played it when I was little, but I heard I was pretty decent at it. And I, I like to run personally, so probably, yeah. Right. Well, so you got your senior year this year coming up. Hopefully it's a normal season, right? And this is kind of the year, right? You guys are all seniors. The window is slowly shutting. Yeah. Most of these stories end. I mean, if you look at the parallels between you guys and West Mesa, same way, right? They came close a couple of years. They finally got over the hump, the last chance. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the storybook ending that you guys are hoping to have this year? I'm definitely hoping that will happen because, again, we have a lot of talented players on our team, and I think if we just all kind of combine together and play as a team, it's kind of unstoppable in my opinion because we're a super good defensive team. Like, everyone will get up and all that. And then we have, like, so many different people that can do so many different things on the team. Like, Eva, she's bigger, like, all that. Yeah. Like, Tiona. So I think if we can definitely come out on top if we just do our best. Competition on the girls' side of basketball in the state, I think, is really tough. I don't think people realize that sometimes more there are more good teams on the girls' side than on the boys' side yeah. sometimes, it seems like. And you guys are, again, in a very tough district. I mean, so talk about, you know, kind of the competition and who you guys will have to take down on the way to a blue trophy. Volcano. Right. <laughs> it starts the with them, ones. obviously. <laughs> it's one of the big ones, definitely. I've been playing with some of them on my club team. Like, they're all such, like, they're all good. I think we match up pretty well if we actually play our best and all that because it's kind of been back and forth right. throughout the years like we'll beat them they beat us they beat us last year so hopefully this year will be our time to win and then there's Farmington they've always been pretty good and then I don't really know about Sandia. That district Alvarado. keeps you ready yeah. though doesn't it? I mean you're oh, always ready. Oh it definitely does. We're, it gets us prepared for like everything because it's such a hard district that we're like constantly like facing good teams and we're prepared I think. Well, Riley, we wish you the best of luck the rest of the way. Hopefully we have a very normal, very healthy senior season and good luck in uh, Colorado Springs. And thank you thank for you coming. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for you having for me. thank you for watching. Good night, everybody.